Welcome back, everybody, to the Minnesota Vikings franchise. We got episode number 28 for you guys tonight. In this one, we are going over the entirety of the offseason. We got the draft coming up, we got free agency. We've got some things to do, though, to clean up this roster. So we're kind of in a cap space issue. We got $18.9 million to spend here in free agency. However, in real life, the Minnesota Vikings, they have cut Linval Joseph. They were talking about getting rid of Anthony Harris. They were talking about getting rid of Everson Griffin, who is kind of getting up there in some age. So we are going to kind of look at some of those aspects of this team and try to see if it makes sense for us. Obviously, this is a totally different team than how the real-life Minnesota Vikings are built. Namely, a guy like Josh Klein is a guy that I'm looking at to getting rid of as well. So those are probably the top four names that I'm thinking about probably moving on from and trying to clear some cap space. We do have some young guys in the roster that could easily take those spots. So let's take a look and see what we could kind of work around here, look at some cap space that we might be able to relieve ourselves from so that we can actually make a big move here in free agency. Anthony Harris, you can see him right there with the bonus with $1.86 million. He's making 2.76 in 2021, so this will be in year number three. He's a 72 overall right now, and he's actually tied with Demetrius Parker, a one-year pro, a guy that we drafted last season. So if you want to go ahead and make the decision to make the rookie player, the one-year youngster play, like you could easily do that. Christian Wade, a running back, making about a million dollars on a one-year deal. Releasing him gets us that cap room back. Now, this is a move that when you look at it, you're thinking like, yeah, let's do it. Let's release Everson Griffin. Let's free up $14 million in cap space. But hey, Everson Griffin is a really, really good player, right? We could easily get something back for him and still have some cap space to work with. So didn't cut him. I want to see what we could offer him up for for trades. We might be able to acquire a draft pick too that might be able to help us in the draft. So just some things to think about here as we're going forward in the offseason. Let's take a look at the free agent offers. And there's quite a lot of good players here up on the board. Cooper Cup, Leonard Fournette. Even though we got D Dalvin Cook, he might be a, like a RB2 at this point, Leonard Fournette. Uh, in some people's eyes, in some people's circles, He's kind of that fringe RB1 now for whatever reason. So I personally like Leonard Fournette, but a lot of people out there are really dogging on him. But DeMonte Kazee would be a perfect player for us. It would be an instant upgrade at free safety. He, he would move to an 80 overall. He would definitely take over that, that first line of defense there for free safety. But the guy that I'm looking at here is Ryan Kerrigan, a 79 overall, superstar X Factor. Like, he's a really good player, guys. He's, a, he's an oldie at 33, but I like him. I like him. He might be able to help us out. And here's the big news that you guys have all been waiting for. Kirk Cousins is a free agent. So we elected to not go ahead and bring him back. We are going with the rookie, JT Peppers, out of Minnesota, no less. So the hometown hero, the hometown boy. We're going to give him a shot here with a Super Bowl caliber roster, which when you look at it and you're thinking, Goldie, you got Everson Griffin on the team and you got a Super Bowl caliber roster. Why are you trying to move him off? Why are you trying to ship him out? Well, if we can acquire a right guard like Larry Warford, get a young right end in Marcus Davenport at a 74 overall, that's only five points in the overall difference. I kind of like that move. I kind of like that move. That would be a winning move especially with how we love to run the football at Dalvin Cook. That would be a great move, especially with a rookie at, or a one-year pro at quarterback, JT Peppers. But they don't really want to move. They don't want to move that. It doesn't make sense for them, apparently. They liked it a little. They liked it enough to where they thought about it, but didn't end up pulling the trigger. So we're going a little bit on the cheaper side of things. We're going to go ahead and try to acquire Wyatt Teller, a Virginia Tech right guard that looks to be like he's got some pretty solid numbers plus he's a he would be an instantaneous upgrade at right guard for us too especially Josh Klein he would end up moving out of that right guard spot we can end up moving on from him Jaquan Johnson one of my favorite players um, strong safety is a 69 we threw him into the deal and we basically swapped draft picks in the fourth round so we traded our 126th for the 125th so we got a one spot difference there so we basically plused one on our draft pick order 
which makes sense. So we got rid of Everson Griffin, we acquired some cap space, which was all good, and we got our starting right guard, who's gonna be pretty solid too. Some free agent offers, we're gonna try to acquire Solomon Thomas, a good player out of Stanford, and he's got a lot of interest between Buffalo and New England. But we're gonna try to outbid both of those teams in order to try to acquire Solomon Thomas. We offered Ryan Kerrigan a deal here. You guys can see that up on the board. So we're trying to look at some linebackers here. But you can see it, $23.3 million in cap space. I want Ryan Kerrigan. I, just, I think he would be great for this team. Let's take a look at some free safety, some cornerbacks. I mean, cornerback has always been a position of need for us ever since Xavier Rhodes got traded, got moved on from. Bradley Roby would be a nice little addition here, especially with that superstar X factor. But uh, we're going to try to address cornerback in the draft. I think if we can acquire a young guy, that might make more sense than trying to overpay for a veteran cornerback. But John Ross, he was great. John Ross was great in that Cincinnati Bengals franchise in Madden 19. So you know what? I want John Ross on this offense. I think we're going to give JT Peppers some more targets in that offense. We got Dalvin Cook. We're going to have Diggs, Thielen, Hardman. Like, this offense is going to explode under JT Peppers, guys. So I'm really looking forward to this season. So there's our three offers. We've now got knocked down to 12.5 in cap space if all of these moves go through. And I'm hoping that they do. So let's go ahead and simulate and see what happens. Drum roll, please. Dun -dun 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 -dun. We got John Ross. We got John Ross. However, we are in week three of the offseason. So I'm going to go over the roster. And spoiler, we got both of them. We got both of them. So we got John Ross. We got Solomon Thomas. We got Ryan Kerrigan. We got all three of our targets here in free agency. And just and what's great about this is that it all happened because of and thanks to the trade of Everson Griffin. We freed up all that cap space. We got three play, basically four players just by getting rid of Everson Griffin. It makes sense for us, guys. Wyatt Teller, our new starting right guard. Got a lot of strength, got good run blocking numbers, got good pass blocking numbers. He's going to be good for us in this run heavy style of offense, which actually might be changing too, by the way, which might be changing simply because JT Peppers can run the football a little bit. He's got some mobility to him where Kirk did not, right? So this offense is now going to be a little bit more dynamic. I think this is just going to be overall just a winning offseason, a winning move for us in year number three. Looking at the cornerbacks, again, we are definitely gonna be looking at cornerback in the draft. Got some veterans here, 27 years old, 24, 24, Hughes, Mackenzie Alexander up there. So we got some pretty good cornerbacks on this team, but again, I think we could do a little bit better. Strong safety, got some depth here with Jaquan Johnson and Thomas. I'm liking where we're at, I think we're good. I'm not looking to trade away Anthony Harris any longer because now we've actually solved some of our holes on the team. I think keeping Anthony Harris and just kind of allowing Demetrius Parker just to sit back there, get put into situations that he might succeed at would be just good for his development. So we'll just continue to monitor and see how Anthony Harris plays. Taking a look at the draft board. So who is available to get drafted? We are looking at defensive tackles. That's kind of my number one target here is defensive tackle and mostly because Linval Joseph is just like he's just getting up there in age guys and looking at a guy like Jordan Williams out of Clemson big guy six foot four would be a nice target he's not the biggest defensive tackle even though he is in that archetype of a run stopper there's a couple other guys that are really bigger that can just clog that hole kind of like this guy Tonga six four three forty one out of BYU love this guy Love this guy. So I hope that this guy falls to us here in the fourth round because if he does, I'm going to take him. Josh Klein will get traded to, to the Chicago Bears. Kind of a weird trade there. I never usually like to trade away pieces to in-division rivals, but they were literally the only team that wanted them. So you know what? I'm like, hey, if, if I'm adding to your cap space, I'm fine with that. <laughs> take this guy off our hands here. All right, taking a look at the top 100 players in league signings. Taewon Taylor, one of my favorite wide receivers, is going to go to the New England Patriots. And you guys will notice 
a recurring theme here. The Patriots were super active in free agency. Just a couple names that you can see here, right? Kirk Cousins is going to be a New England Patriot. So Tom Brady is gone. Kirk Cousins was basically released by us. And he's going to go on over to New England to try to win a Super Bowl. And did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? The Dominican Sioux is now a Patriot, right? It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. So he's out in Tampa Bay in real life with Brady. Brady leaves the Patriots in this simulation, in this series, and then he goes to Brady's former team. So just kind of kind of a weird little dynamic there. Take a look at those Patriots. Take a look at this roster, guys. Is anything really different from the Patriots compared to the Vikings? You know, now that Kirk Cousins is at quarterback. Wide receivers are pretty decent, right? Nikhil Harry, Taewon Taylor, Braxton Berrios, Josh Gordon's up there. I, I mean, we've got better receivers for sure. Our tight end's better. Ryan Izzo, left tackle Isaiah Wynn. Our guards are better, I feel like. Left tackle, there is Isaiah Wynn right there. Ryan Izzo, we talked about him. Emil Kelton, custom prospect. Now the offensive line is definitely better for New England. So it, it really does fit Kirk Cousins. And I'm just updating you guys on the Patriots here because they were so active in free agency. And we got to kind of like keep it in the back of our mind, guys, of how Kirk Cousins is going to perform for New England this season. I think he's going to do fine. I think he's going to have maybe even a better year than he did with Minnesota. But it's kind of because they have a little bit better of a roster, just a little bit, now that we're looking at the defense, right? All right, let's get into the actual draft. Now, guys, we are picking 30th. Yep, we're picking 30th because we made it all the way to the NFC Championship game. I'm going to go ahead and just advance to next pick. So there's a lot of custom prospects in this. And as we see Trevor Lawrence going to the Washington Redskins, which is kind of kind of funny in my mind because it, they must not have a lot of faith in Dwayne Haskins. And, um, you know, I guess, but then again, I guess when you're that bad with Dwayne Haskins and there sits Trevor Lawrence, you're probably taking Trevor Lawrence, guys. So let's get back into the draft board here. We got Justin Ross. Now keep in mind that some of these guys, obviously with this draft class and with how our series was timed up, Obviously, a lot of these guys in the pros now that ended up getting drafted in real life, like Antoine Winfield Jr. got drafted in real life, he would not have been in this draft in this draft class because at the time, we didn't know who was declaring and who wasn't, right? So that's just kind of an explanation there. But Penae Sewell, definitely going to be a year number two, a uh, draftable player here in 2020. Actually, 2021 being in the spring. Kelvin Joseph, good player, good corner. And we're just waiting until we get to the Vikings pick here, guys. We are at pick number 24, 25, 26. We got Jordan here, Daniels. JT Daniels, quarterback going to the Chargers. And then Andre Sisco. And now we're up. We're up. We got pick number 30. So... Here's the thing. We could focus on defensive tackle. We could go grab a guy like that. We don't really need a right tackle. We're pretty good there. We're pretty solid. We could go after cornerback. But at the top of the order, there's just really nothing there for us. We could basically take the best player available. But does that really help like does that really help what we're trying to do? Like we're pretty good all the way around. Do we really need to take the best player available or are we trying to fill holes here? In my opinion, we're trying to fill some holes. And I kind of like Dylan Moses from Alabama. That's who we're going to take. He's an 80 overall. And look at those stats. Look how nice and balanced that those are for middle linebacker. I love it. I love it. So Dylan Moses from Alabama, the tackling machine, is coming on over here. And he's just a young, he's a young linebacker that's going to be able to take over for Anthony Barr. Uh, Eric Kendricks is getting up there a little bit in age. And plus we got Ryan Kerrigan, too, who is definitely a big-time veteran. So... Linebacker is a little old, and Dylan Moses is going to get some time. He's good enough to get some time on this playoff caliber roster with an 80 overall player. Like I think that he's going to he's going to definitely see the field. So it's a good pick in my mind. I did, I just didn't like what was up what was up on the board. Um, taking offensive lineman that we didn't really have good scouting reports on just didn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'd rather take a guy that we kind of know. And uh, just it basically fits our need uh, to get a young middle linebacker. But 
Round number three, this is our next pick. So we actually did not have a second round draft pick this season. And that was basically because we had to trade that away to make some, make some things work uh, for a Xavier Rhodes trade, I believe. And looking at this offer, we've got Lamont Wade here, a strong safety. Now he would basically back up Harrison Smith, but he had a 7.8 in the combine. He's a little small at five foot nine. He's about the same size as Jaquan Johnson. So that kind of sucks that we traded and acquired Jaquan uh, just to see Lamont Wade is sitting here. But another guy we might be able to consider here is Jordan Williams, that defensive tackle. Again, we noticed how he's got, he's got, he's not very big, right? He's, he's not got a lot of size, not a lot of size, not going to be the defensive tackle that just sits there right in the middle and just plugs up and takes, takes up two offensive linemen, right? So if anything, I, I think that it makes sense for him to kind of fall into that fourth round area. I think that we'll just wait on that. But the guy that I'm probably looking at here, it's either Tonga or it's Lamont Wade out of Penn State. And knowing that defensive tackle is definitely up on our board and on our list of importance and important positions that we have to address, I'm taking Tonga right there. I think that it's a great pick for us. He's going to be a defensive tackle of the future, a young guy there. I think it's a good pick. Maybe you could have argued that you wanted to take Lamont Wade at strong safety. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that, but I went another direction. Fourth round pick. We have pick number 14 in the fourth round. So who are we going to take here? Could we go back-to-back -back defensive tackles? I don't really like it. I don't really like it. We could go for this right guard, Josh Anderson, but we've already addressed right guard with Wyatt Teller. We ended up trading for him. Tight end could be an option with Chase Allen from Iowa State. But again, we've got Kyle Rudolph, Irv Smith Jr., Ty Conklin. It doesn't make it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to go with a tight end here, even though I do like his playmaking ability. Uh, Derek Smith had a really good combine at 7.4, but I think the pick here is the cornerback Trey Dean, right? He's a real life player, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This guy was a part of the corrupted draft class here, and I didn't have any idea who he was. I had no idea who he was, but we ended up scouting him, and he was a second round grade. And once we drafted him, it was like, oh, he's a 78 with a hidden dev trait. Like, holy crap. So, no lie, I had no idea that that was a thing, but I'm going to stick with it. And I did stick with it. You're watching the dang video. So I did stick with it. Trey Dean is going to be one of our top cornerbacks on the team out of Florida. And, you know, being the fastest cornerback, that's really what I was looking for, is just the fastest cornerback. And he did that. He ran a 4-3-5, right? So we took him in the fourth. We're going to go after that defensive tackle, Jordan Williams. We've talked about him at length. I do like him there. So we ended up taking him right after Trey Dean. Next pick, we're in the fifth round. We got pick number 30 in the fifth round. A couple ways we could go. We could go with another running back. You can never have too many running backs in your stable, for sure. Or we could go for Lynn Bowden, <laughs> an athlete, a player that might be able to help us at wide receiver here for just for depth purposes. And he could maybe kind of gadget in and play at running back too, which for a playoff team, that kind of thing is very, very valuable, especially with the value that he would bring to the team as far as the depth perspective goes. But we end up taking Lynn Bowden here, and look at those numbers, guys. 78 catching, so he's got to work on that a little bit, but the athleticism's there. He might be able to get in on some punt returns, kick returns, things like that. Stuff I mentioned. Running plays, screens, little read option plays as well. So I like that pick. I think it makes sense for us. And then we're going to select Rakeem Boyd, a running back. An elusive back that I, I really liked his stats and his combine numbers, guys. 90 speed, 93 excel, 92 agility. Good player, especially l this late at an 84 elusiveness rating, too. He's going to be pretty solid. Like, he could also work himself into a potential kick return role. We'll put him on the practice squad initially and just see kind of how he progresses. But that normal dev trait, you knew that was going to happen there with a late a late round draft pick. So there's our draft, guys. One, three, two fours, a five, and a six. I personally love it. 
I love it. We got Dylan Moses. We got Tonga. So we solved the defensive tackle issue, especially with Jordan Williams there too. Trey Dean was a perfect pick at cornerback. And then we also acquired Lynn Bowden and Rakeem Boyd. So I think that we solved a lot of our areas of need on the team. And I'm really happy about it. I'm really happy about this offseason. It's a lot better of an offseason. No lie. It's a lot better of an offseason than in year number two. That's why I don't do these things live streams, guys, because, you know, you can screw up and you can screw up pretty bad. <laughs> you can screw up pretty bad in live streams. Now, I'm probably going to regret this pick. Missing out on Lamont Wade. He's an 80. He's an 80. So you want to talk about, like, the perfect replacement for Harrison Smith once he's long gone? That would have been it. That would have been the pick there. But I'm going to leave you guys with this screen. I have a Excel file listed out of all of the custom prospects and where they went. So who drafted whom. And I'm going to be working on that actually while you guys are probably watching this for sure. Uh, but that will be completed by the end of this video. And um, I just want you guys to be able to keep track of where players are going and where that they've been especially because I know that you guys are really wondering about where your custom prospect went. You want to know, you know, what your what your draft stock looked like, where you were taken, what your overall was and uh, what your outlook is for playing time too with that team. Of course, the more seasons that we go on with this, it's it gets to a point where it's not really possible to just look at every single custom prospects stats so if they're actually doing something if they're doing something significant you're just going to run into it you're just going to find it you're going to see it say oh my guy's got seven touchdowns on the season blah 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 so that's it that's all i got for you guys tonight hope you guys liked the off season this season year three was a lot better than year two i feel like let me know in the comment section below what maybe you would have done differently are there certain players that you thought i should have taken that i didn't um, just so I kind of have an idea, maybe when that player does come by in a few off seasons, we might be able to sign him, right? That's it. That's all I got. Leave a like if you like this thing. I will catch you guys in the next one next week. As always, Skull Vikings and peace.